What is good YouTube? It is your boy Dev and today we are back again with another video. Today I want to talk to you guys about how I have amassed over a hundred thousand dollars in net worth over the past two years with my girl. So before we jump into this video guys, it's always a little weird making videos about this because the goal is never to brag, the goal is never to boast. Nobody is trying to show off. Nobody is trying to say, hey, look at all this money I got. Like, guys, $100,000 in net worth is literally almost no money. Like I said, it has been amassed in two years, and people are making $100,000 off of flips of houses. So $100,000 is not a lot of money, but at the same time, $100,000 is something, and this $100,000 is going to continue to grow as we acquire more assets. So this video is not to brag, but just to show some inspiration because you know a lot of people would like to make $100,000 over the next two years of their life, but they don't know how, so they're choosing things that may be illegal to achieve that goal of making $100,000. And that that thing that they may be doing may cause them to end up in jail or prison or whatever. And guys, maybe if you as their father shared this to your kid, or maybe if you as somebody's uncle shared this to your niece or your nephew, or maybe you as a teacher shared this to your student, maybe you, know, you might save somebody's life. You might ultimately help somebody to achieve their goal of amassing uh, some generational wealth for their family, right? So how I have amassed over $100,000 in net worth with my girl, my girl is not here with me today, but how we have done it over the past two years. Let's jump in guys. So a couple years ago, we wanted to start buying property. So back in 2018, we purchased our first property. Now I'm going to try to put a picture somewhere on the screen. I don't know where it's going to fall. And if you guys don't end up seeing the picture, I guess that just means I didn't figure out how to put it on the screen. But anyways, we purchased a beautiful three bedroom, one bath house two years ago, back in 2018 for $55,000. Now at the time, $55,000 was what I felt like the house was worth because the lady that owned the house was older. The house had never really been updated. So the deal that we got, I felt like was fair because we were going to have to go into the home, put paint on all the walls, redo the floors, and just bring it back to life a little bit. Because like I said, she was a little bit older and she did not really have the taste of a modern young lad like myself that, you know, when I come home, I want to see my house looking like, right? So 55,000 was the purchase price. My girlfriend and I, we decided to live in that house for one year. The mortgage that we got on the property, the bank required us to live in the property for one year. But my ultimate goal when I purchased that property was to buy a duplex property because I wanted to start investing in rental property. And my goal from the beginning was to buy a duplex, but the bank would only allow me to buy that single family home, which was like I said, a three bedroom, one bath. So we purchased it, $55,000, went in, did a few little things. We painted everywhere. We got the hardwood floors refinished. They looked literally amazing. Um, they looked like glass, very similar to our new house. Um, but everything was just looking on par. We didn't do anything crazy though, though. We didn't redo the bathroom. We didn't redo the kitchen. We did put a, a peel and stick backsplash up that looked very nice. We painted the cabinets, put new handles on there. So just did some things that brought it back to life. But we paid 55,000 for it. We lived in it for one year and then we turned around, rented that property out and it has been a rental property since about October of 2019. So a little over a year. So that's property number one. Now, property number one today is now valued at about $90,000. So I recently looked because I wanted to see how much of my loan we had paid down. And you guys know when you buy a house and you don't put down a lot of money, which you know my goal when I'm buying houses is to put down really as little money as possible in order to get into the deal because I don't have a lot of cash, right? So I like to bump into deals with as little money as possible. So for that house, I think I had to put down maybe in total with my down payment and my closing costs, maybe like $4,000, right? So I put down like $4,000 and right now on that loan, two years later, I owe 51,000. So if you do the math, $90,000 is what a three bedroom, one bathroom house in this area is appraising for and is selling for 90,000 minus 51,000 is $39,000 in equity that we have sitting 
in that property. Now guys, that is unreal, but that is the power of real estate. And you really never know if you're gonna experience appreciation on a property. For me, appreciation um, is a bonus. And for those of you who don't know, I probably should have explained appreciation. Appreciation is basically saying that, you know, you buy something and then in a couple years or in a month or in a week, the property is worth more than you paid for the property, right? So you never know if you're gonna get appreciation and like I said, for me, appreciation is just a bonus, but I like to see cash flow. So what was important for that deal for me was I needed to know where the mortgage payment was. So the mortgage payment is under $500 a month on that property, but I'm getting over $800 a month in rent. So cash flow, the difference between what my mortgage is and of course, vacancy, maintenance, repairs, little things like that, but we're getting, you know, kind of deep. I'm trying to keep this video on the surface, um, but the difference between what my mortgage payment is and what I'm getting in rent is my cash flow every month. So that property not only has $39,000 worth of equity just sitting in the property, which is awesome, but it's also making us over $300 a month, um, you know, as a rental property, which is awesome. It pays for my 2016 Harley Davidson Street Glide, which is freaking amazing. So, you know, what more can you ask for? So that is property number one. All right, guys, let's jump into property number two. So this property I've been talking about a lot on the channel and it is my duplex that I own. So I purchased a duplex last year back in 2018 or not, no, 2019, 2018 was the year I purchased the single family home. So 2019, I purchased my first multifamily property. I purchased a two unit apartment here in the city that I live in. I paid 72,000 for the property. Now this property, I happened to get an amazing deal on it. I had a relationship with the agent who was the listing agent for the property. Um, and she knew that we had been looking for a duplex basically all summer. She ended up getting this listing of the property. She called me, told me to go look at it. And we basically were the first to put in an offer. We ended up getting the offer accepted and I got an amazing deal of paying $72,000 for the property. Now, sadly, when I bought the property, one of the units was kind of destroyed. It was in horrible condition. The tenants that were in there did not take care of the property. They let the dog that they had pee all over the carpet. The carpet was soaking wet as we were carrying it outside. I know, disgusting, just nasty. But, you know, things happen and that's, you know, sometimes some of the downsides of owning rental property if you know you don't do an amazing job vetting your tenants and really knowing who you're putting into your properties right so you know we bought that property we had to go in we spent four thousand dollars just on getting the floors to where they needed to be in order for us to feel comfortable living in the property but you know it's been a year we lived in that property for a full year um, we recently just moved out of that property actually within the last month. If you guys have been following the channel, that is the property that you see in the background of most of my videos where I pull up the bikes up the driveway and you know, that's that property. That's a duplex property just to kind of picture it in your head. But we paid 72,000 for the property a year ago. Right now, well actually, let's, let's go back to that year. A year ago, that property realistically probably could have sold for a lot more than 72,000. That property in the condition that it was in, even with the floor being messed up in one of the units, it probably could have sold for 90, 95,000 back then. Now, since I purchased it, I went into that unit, I updated it. My girlfriend and I, again, we went in, we painted, we did the floor job that needed done. We put that nice vinyl, luxury vinyl wood flooring in there. And we just sort of got it to where it needed to be in order to be a really nice, duplex rental property right so we got the yard together although the yard wasn't really in bad condition but you guys saw all that in a couple videos ago when i posted a little tour of that video got that property to where it needed to be and now that property is worth about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars guys i paid seventy two thousand for the property one year ago and it is worth now about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars guys that is a 50K spread. Where are you making 50K other than a job? You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, that is $50,000 in equity sitting in that property right now. And not only that, if you saw the last video or whatever video it was that I posted um, about that property, that property not only has $50,000 sitting within 
the the property like it's not fifty thousand dollars in cash at the property guys don't be an idiot and go try to take fifty thousand dollars out of the property because guys use your brain it's not real it's it's equity right so it's money that if i were to sell the property i would be able to take that fifty thousand dollars and move forward with my life you get what i'm saying but it's not fifty thousand dollars cash it's equity it's wealth right? It's a different conversation. It's, it's not cash sitting aside. It is wealth in the property, right? So $50,000 is not only within that property, right? But it is also making me $800 a month in cash flow, guys. The difference between my mortgage payment and the difference between what I'm getting in rent, there's an $800 spread, guys. Every month, I get $800 a month for owning that property on top of the $50,000 in equity that is sitting in that property. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to clap and say, God dang, that is crazy, guys. God is so good because a couple years ago, I had this dream of buying up property. And the only thing that I really wanted out of it was cash flow. I didn't really care if the property really appreciated. I didn't really care if it was worth a lot more than what I paid for it. Because at the end of the day, as long as the difference between what my mortgage payment is and what I could get for rent was a good amount, you know, as long as I was making a positive cash flow of at least like $300 a month per unit, your boy is happy, right? But on top of the cash flow, I have gotten appreciation as well of, you know, like I said, 50,000 for the one, 40,000 for the other. That's 90K right there. Now, those are the first two properties, but let's jump into property number three because we have not really gotten a chance to talk about this property much on the channel yet. And there's going to be a lot more conversation around this property because this property is going to be a little different for us. We plan on uh, living in this property for a little while, right? So this isn't going to be like one of those properties that we live in for one year, rent out the next. We actually plan on using this home as our somewhat kind of forever home. So it's not going to be our forever home. We will be buying a, our dream home one day, right? When we have enough cash flow built up that will pay for our dream home and it will not, you know, put any strain on us. But for now, this is our somewhat, you know, dream home. Like this has been the home that we've wanted for a few years. We'll talk about that more in another video, but I've known about this house for a while and it's just a blessing that we've been able to purchase this house and move into this house. But this last house that we're going to talk about, this is our third property that we have purchased within the past two years. This property we purchased for a grand total of $68,000, right? We got this property. It's a four bedroom, two bathroom house for $68,000. Now, not only that, but it has a huge garage in the back. It's a two and a half car. So I can finally fit all the motorcycles and the cars in the garage finally like i'm so tired of leaving my cars outside um and the bikes well no the bikes don't sit outside no of course not the bikes of course get first place spots in the garages wherever we've been at but now i can fit the bikes and the cars in the garage which is awesome but has a big garage four bedrooms two baths so this is the biggest property uh, biggest single family that we own um we paid sixty eight thousand, but we knew that this property was undervalued in the fact that it needed a ton of work to it. So the house, similar to the first house that we bought, the owner of this home was older. So the home had not really been updated to today's standards and today's um, needs of what new buyers are looking for when it comes to properties, right? So this property, when we came into it, um, if you guys wanna see this property, I had it um, a couple videos ago, girlfriend purchased, us a new crib. If you guys go watch that video, you'll see the tour of what this house looked like when we got it. But it was in very old condition, we can say. There were a lot of cracks in the walls. The carpet in here was an extremely old school color. Like it was like a light blue. It was kind of weird, but it was an older color. But the couple that lived in here, they were older. So it fit them. But when we came in, it was like, okay, this house is very outdated. But if this house was brought back up to life, this house would probably be worth a pretty penny, right? And we knew that going into it. So we paid $68,000 for the house. We've came in, we put about $5,000 out of our own money 
into this house thus far in a lot of sweat equity, guys. If there is something that we could do in this house to save us some money, we have literally done it because money has been tight buying these houses, guys. That is probably the hardest part of buying all these houses, guys. Money is just so tight because these houses take money when you're putting up the money for the down payment, your closing costs, and then not only that, but when you get into the house, you have to come in and do these repairs. So money has been tight. So literally everything that we could do ourselves, we painted this whole house by ourselves. We've done some of the plumbing by ourselves. We've literally just done every little thing that we could do by ourselves to save the money. We've done the countertops. If you follow me on Facebook, you've seen the countertop transformation. We've literally tried to save as much money as possible by doing as much work by ourselves just because, like I said, money is tight, but that's how it is when you're buying these deals on, on faith, like we're doing it, right? So we pay 68,000, but we put a ton of sweat equity, probably about $5,000 to $7,000 in sweat equity as far as all the painting, all the other little stuff that we've done, and then $5,000 in money that we've spent on things like getting the floors done and materials as far as paint, as far as the countertop materials, as far as like literally everything. I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but after all the work that we have completed in this house, we paid 68,000 for this house. But right now, if we needed to sell this property, we could probably get right around $110,000 for this house, for this property that we just paid $68,000 for, just because we now know as real estate investors that just because something you know may not look the prettiest when you buy it, if you go in and you're buying houses that you know people were looking for and you do the type of updates, you put the type of colors, you do the type of things that people are interested in, you will always, 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 guys, if you buy undervalued, you will always be able to make some money on the sale if you decide to sell it. Now, guys, you know I don't plan on selling any of my properties. I'm buying these properties to build generational wealth for my family. That is so important to me because it's not something that I've seen my family really do. There have not been many assets passed down in my family. So all the properties that I hope to acquire over the years, I really hope to pass them down to the generation after me because I want my generation after me to start with something and to continue building on what I have started. You know what I'm saying? What me and my woman have started to build, right? So these properties will be getting passed down. I don't plan on selling any of these properties, but if you do the math on the first property, $40,000 in equity. On the second property, $50,000 in equity. And on this third property, right around $40,000 in equity. And you know, the first two properties, not only the equity, but you got the cash flow with it. Guys, you really cannot beat property investing, man. It has honestly changed me and my woman's life we are living a freaking dream life, living in a house that we really do not really deserve to be living in because we do not make enough money to be living in this house, but we have assets that are bringing in money that are paying for things such as this house, things such as the vehicles that we have. You know what I'm saying? Like we use the properties, we use the income from the properties. Of course, we set a little aside for repairs and for vacancy, but we use the income that the properties make to pay for our lifestyle, guys. That's what it's all about. That's the trick that I feel like society sort of tricks us with. They tell us we have to go live our lives in a certain way. But honestly, guys, that's not true. You can buy a few rental properties, allow them to pay for your lifestyle, and live a dream life, guys. That's the honest to God truth, man. So I'm gonna thank you guys for tuning into this video. Again, this video is not to brag, to boast. This video hopefully inspired you to go out there and get your hands on some property. Hire an awesome realtor, guys, to help you. I'm a local realtor here in my market. So if you live in my market, reach out to me on my Instagram or my Facebook. I work with a lot of clients in the local area. But if you are interested in working with me, I would love to work with you and help you start building wealth for your family, guys, because that's what it's all about, man. That is what it's all about. So thank you guys again for tuning into this video. I hope you got some inspiration. Share this video, guys. Share this video with somebody who can benefit from it because I just hope to be an inspiration to you, your family. And uh, guys, let's just get it, man. As Doug Depp says, let's get it. It's a beautiful day to get it. Let's get out here, buy some property, and uh, let's do our thing, man. And always remember, guys, when God is in it, 
there is no limit. I will catch up with you guys in the next video. Peace.